<sighs> I had such high hopes. Graphene is supposed to be one of the most thermally conductive materials in existence, even competing or exceeding with diamonds. So why aren't we seeing it more in PC cooling? Graphene has been demonstrated, and I found a, for one particular site where it has been demonstrated to have about 4,000 watts per meter per degree Kelvin. So if you see that written out, a lot of times you'll see a capital W with a slash and then an M. K. That is phenomenal because diamond, which has been considered one of the highest thermally conductive materials in existence, has only about 2000 W per MK. So graphene already is showing itself to be super amazing when it comes to thermal conductivity. Well, a while ago, I remember seeing a video that Linus did and he talked to, he tested a graphene pad. Now, that being said, before he even did the test, I mean, I clicked on this video and I'm, I'm expecting to see exactly what I ended up seeing. And that the performance on that graphene pad was terrible. So for one, it's kind of a hard and rigid pad. And you know, the, the, the advertiser of this pad was like reusable. Well, the problem is, is that it's not just the thermal conductivity of the material. There is microscopic mountains and valleys and crevices that have to be filled because if any of those gaps have space, space leads to air and air is not very thermally conductive. And so what you're trying to do is fill in all those microscopic cracks and crevices so that you create as solid of an impact between the CPU lid and your thermal heat sink whether it be a block or an actual tower cooler. But the point is, is that that allows that heat to transfer more freely. So that graphene pad was basically bound to fail before it ever even got to market because it's a solid rigid pad. It's not going to fill in those microscopic spaces. Why do we not have a graphene thermal paste? And I'm just, I'm looking at this and thinking, obviously, if the material is so well, then what we want to do is use it as a thermal paste like we did with pretty much every other thermal paste in existence, and that should work, right? But nobody seems to have it. Or didn't they? So I hop on Amazon, I do some searching, and sure enough, I find a graphene thermal paste. It's from a company that calls itself Graphitine, and their thermal paste is GTP-5. So I picked up a tube. I actually did this a long time ago, and I'm finally getting a chance to test it now. And so what I decided to do um, with testing it is I had a couple of good thermal pastes on hand. So I had my Gela GC Extreme, and I decided to also use the Arctic MX-4. Um, both of those are pretty darn solid performers. They may not be the uh, absolute top of the top of the line best, but I've personally seen Gelid, uh, Gelid GC Extreme be really well in my personal use. The problem, though, with testing thermal paste, and, and this is one of the things that I've noticed, is if you don't have a proper application, then you can actually get really skewed numbers. I've learned in the past that if you have, like, the dot methods always work really well, but... The key with the dot method is you need to make sure there's enough that once the heat sink's pressure is put on it, it spreads evenly across the entire CPU die. If it only covers a fraction, like three quarters of the center of the die, even though they say that's where all the heat is centered at, it still seems to limit the thermal performance. Also, if you have like way gobbing, gooping too much amount, it can hurt those temperatures by just, you know, a couple few degrees. But a lot of times those couple few degrees are the difference between the standouts and the terrible ones. So what I've found is I like to see that over 90% of the die is covered or even just a tiny bit of overlap on the edges and it'll be perfect. How do you do that? Well, I have to do the test, take the heat sink off and take pictures. And so as you can see, I've done that, my pictures look great, and I had exactly the right amount of coverage that was consistent across my three tests with my three different thermal paste. The other big key there is having a consistent room temperature. Now, you can do a, a delta T measurement if you can measure the air going into the front and the back of the CPU cooler, which is also not a bad way to do it. But 
I was able to keep my room temperature consistently at 22 degrees Celsius. So with that consistency of room temperature, I was totally okay with just using the core temperatures at that point. Also to kind of help, you know, um, kind of balance out any of the fluctuations in the CPU testing, I do a five minute warm up with OCCT and then I test for 10 minutes and using HW Info to monitor that 10 minutes, I pull the average. And that does a really good job of being incredibly consistent. In fact, even tests where I wasn't sure and I would have to retest, um, I still would come within 0.2 or even, I mean, 0.2 or 0.1 degrees Celsius of my testing. So there's just very, very little variance, which I really like when I'm doing this kind of stuff. So what was our results? Well, not so good. Unfortunately, the graphitine fall fell pretty far behind both my Gelid and my Arctic thermal pace. And so we have to ask ourselves the question, why doesn't this work? If graphene has such great thermal conductive properties, what happened? Well, there's probably a few explanations. Number one, and I noticed this, um, if you look for graphene powder on Amazon, you'll, you'll see a lot of different um, vendors that sell it, and you'll see microscopic pictures of the structure. And it's, it's this flaky structure, so even though it looks like a powder to the naked eye, microscopically it looks like these large flat saucers. And it's very possible that that rigid kind of shale type looking structure is causing it to not work very well for getting into the cracks and valleys of your CPU lid and even the base of whatever heat, whatever CPU heat sink you're using. If it's not able to properly fit in there, it won't do a good job of thermally conducting. Why is that? Well, here's how thermal paste works. They usually use some form of silicon grease to help hold all the particles together. If you don't have the silicon grease, you'd be just like trying to pour powder in there and trying to compress it, and it probably would not work very well. There'd be a lot of air gaps still. So silicon grease helps ensure that there isn't air gaps. Well, it's thermally conductive, but not great. Silicon grease can have thermal conductivities about as high as three watts per meter per degree Kelvin, which is significantly lower than the metals that use that that they're typically used. For instance, aluminum and copper have much much higher, much much higher thermal conductive properties than silicon grease does. And this also shows that if you look online and look at reviews where you'll see testing, you'll see liquid metals work so much better than traditional thermal paste. And I say so much better, there may only be about a few degrees difference, but they always seem to top the charts. Well, liquid metal is also and or molten metals are far more thermally conductive than greases, oils, or even water. And so it kind of makes sense that this graphene um, thermal paste didn't work as well. Is that the end of the story? Well, maybe not. I did do some more searching and I saw that there's actually some other brands picking up on this idea of graphene thermal paste, particularly Scythe. Now, Scythe is a company that has a long history of making quality CPU coolers. In fact, I have two Scythe Mugen 5s in my room right now. I use one in my test bench, and I actually, in my main system, use one of their ARGB versions, which I absolutely love. But um, they've, they've been known to do good quality work. And it's possible that they're going to have mixed the right amounts of percentages of graphene powder with their various silicon mixtures and other mixtures that help with conductivity and um, electrical conductivity, not heat conductivity, because thermal pastes are typically not electrical conductive. Well, there's some resistors put into that mix as well. So in essence, Scythe has a non-electrically conductive thermal paste that also has graphene. And I also saw some other brands that had some things like carbon-based. So if there's enough interest here, I would totally love to buy some more tubes and test it. Now, that being said, um, this poor guy is in between jobs right now, so I'm not going to just be running out on Amazon and spending a ton of money. So let me know in the video. If you like, you know, like, this, like this video, subscribe to my channel. If I'm getting a lot of views, getting a lot of comment feedback, I will totally give that a shot because then it'll be worth it and I'd be more than happy to figure that out. Right now, the verdict is graphene thermal paste, well, not as good as what we already have 
on the market. So it may not be worth the trouble. But anyway, like I said, you let me know, guys. If I get enough feedback, I'd be glad to do it. Just kind of have to have to budget just the way life is sometimes anyway i hope you appreciate this um i would definitely recommend if you like good thermal paste gela gc extreme is a good one it's very easy to apply it spreads out smoothly they did not promote this video in any way this is entirely my opinion so just something to keep in mind out there and hey I'm hoping to bring some more videos and giving you guys some more content. I'm hoping I'm answering some of your questions that you may have when you're doing your PC gaming builds. I will catch you next time.